Okay. Uh, our reading today will be in John. Turn to John chapter 3, and we're going to read 18 to 36. Let's bow in prayer. Holy Father, thank you for your word. It speaks to our heart, our spirit. Help us to grow in grace and knowledge as you give the increase. Thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ who shed blood that we have forgiveness of sins. Father, thank you in eternal life. Uh, we get Again, we ask that you bless all those listening. Thank you, Father, as we come together to hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Bless it to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, verse 18, 318. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But the, he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John was uh, uh, also was baptizing in Enon, uh, near uh, Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. But John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond the Jordan, to whom Thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him Rejoice, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earth, earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from above is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testified. And no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony has set his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath set speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto you. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Okay. Turn over to Revelation chapter 16. <clears throat> we see in, in, uh, in verse 7, and I heard another uh, out of the altar say, say, even so, um, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Now, um, God is pouring out his wrath upon the, the beast or uh, those that are uh, the false church, those that are in Satan's dominion and uh, bring in their false gospels. And uh, if we go over to Revelation uh, 17, it says, And there came 
verse one, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me, come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, which is Babylon, see? And, and so um, God judges Babylon, which is uh, the false external church uh, that has gone after false gospels. And, um, and so um, it even says, as we get into verse 17, five, and upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, say, abominations of the earth. It's a mystery, the great tribulation. It's uh, it's the Babylon is a picture of uh, the churches, say, and uh, that have fallen away from uh, the truth, say, and uh, and so this is the condition uh, as we near the end of time uh, that you, you, the, there will be a famine in the land of hearing the word. So now we get to. Uh, so true and righteous say, are thy judgments, say. and um, uh, God's wrath is upon uh, Babylon. Uh, that is those that are going after false gospels, say, and um, and of course uh, when we get into eighteen, there's some of God's people in there in in Babylon, and the Lord says, "Come out of her," just like Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and his two daughters were in there and yet the Lord brought them out say and so um we get into verse eight and it says and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire this word scorch in the Greek it means uh to burn it means heat say it's used uh few places uh, if you flip over to matthew 13 you could you could see it's used over there in verse 5 and 6 matthew 13 5 and 6 <clears throat> some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung sprung up because they had no depthness of uh, earth uh, and our deepness of earth. And then it says, and when the sun was up, they, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. See? So that word scorched. Uh, so we have to see what that means. And, and we're already uh, seeing uh, that uh, and going back to Re Revelation 16, scorched with great heat, say, and uh, and blaspheme the name of God, and uh, and so uh, this great heat. Uh, of course, we're going to see that it takes in the wrath of God. Say, and so um, uh, again in verse eight, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power is given unto him to scorch scorch men with fire. Now. <clears throat> Uh, we could read some of this language. If you go to Deuteronomy 29, look at two verses over there, 23 and 24. And you could see how uh, fire is used <clears throat> um, in, this, in, this, uh, in these verses. It, it points to the wrath. Uh, Deuteronomy 29 and then 23 and 24. that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning uh, that is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Admazabon, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Sorry. So you have burning right there. So uh, heat, uh, burning, fire uh, is the wrath of God. See? And so um uh, look at uh, also look at Genesis 19 
Look at, remember uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? Look at uh, 23 through 25. Genesis 19, 23 through 25. The sun was risen up upon the earth when Lot entered into Zohar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah uh, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Say, and um, and so, uh, and he, uh, verse twenty five, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities that and that which grew upon the ground. So uh, again, God's wrath poured out upon Sodom and Gomorrah. So you have fire there. Uh, and, and then, it, of course, it says it again in Deuteronomy. And so um, <clears throat> go back to uh, Revelation 16. All right. So we know in uh, so in verse eight, um, 16, eight, the, the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him the scorch men with fire. Uh, and then it goes right in nine, and men were scorched with great heat. So you have fire, great heat. All those uh, are are pictures of, of God's wrath, okay? And we just read John 3, uh, 36. And remember, if you remember what that says, John 3, 36. <clears throat> He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See? So again, uh, God's anger, God's wrath abides on those unbelievers. See? They're under the wrath of God. So uh, back in Revelation 16, um, Men were scorched with, uh, verse 9, with great heat uh, and blaspheme, okay, and blaspheme. Now, I want to show you a contrast. If you go to Revelation 7, <clears throat> when you look at this language in, in verse, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read 7, 15, and 16. Therefore are they before the throne. Uh, these would be those that have been born of God and serve him day and night in the temple. Uh, of course, in Christ, we're in God's kingdom. Uh, and he that sitteth on the throne, uh, Christ, God himself, uh, shall dwell among them. And then it says, they, these are the, the believers, uh, that have been born of God, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore. You know verses that go with that. <clears throat> Just keep your finger here and, and flip over to uh, John 4, 14, uh, where Jesus says, if you drink of the water that I give you, see, look at John 4, 14. So we know it's salvation. We know it's when you get saved. We drink of the gospel. But John 4.14. 4, <clears throat> but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Say, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up to everlasting life. All right. So when it says, go back to Revelation 7. <clears throat> they shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore. Uh, because they're feeding on the gospel of Christ. Uh, Jesus says, he that eateth my flesh, uh, drinketh my blood has everlasting life. And, uh, and so we've, we, we take in, we feed upon the gospel, uh, uh, the water we just read John 4, 14, say they shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore. Then it says, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat say, in other words, we're no longer under the wrath of God. See, you, that sun and that heat would be a picture of God's wrath. And now, now that we're uh, born of God, it says, the sun, uh, neither shall the sunlight on them nor any heat. See, 
So you look at the sun there and the heat as God's wrath. And so as soon as we're born of God, uh, uh, he, he, uh, he, we're no longer under the wrath of God, see? And so uh, this, is, um, uh, this is salvation. Go to Psalms, see if I can remember where that's. I think it's going to say in 85, Psalms 85. It says, cause thy anger to cease. I, I think it's going to be 85. Um, look, at, uh, look at verse 4. Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thy anger toward us to cease. See? So uh, no more heat upon us. So the, the 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 wrath of God now um, is no more upon us because now uh, we're a child of God. Now we have been born of God, say, and uh, and we're now we're in God's kingdom. All right. So go back to uh, Revelation sixteen. But these people, you see, it says uh, in verse nine, and the men were scorched with great heat. Say. So we already know that uh, uh, God's wrath is upon them. And that scorched, it means heat, uh, to burn or heat. So spiritually, uh, we, we look at that as it's God's wrath, okay? And so the men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, the name of God. All right, so the the... the the, the when you read that word blaspheme, it means to speak evil of. Okay, and uh, and so here in in verse nine it says, "He blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory." Okay, so plagues in the Greek would be wound. It means wound, and, and that's sin. Wounds, sores, all pictures of sin, okay? And and, uh, and so uh, it says they, uh, they blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, see? And, uh, and God's the one that has power uh, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us, say, from all sin. But since these, these people here, they're in their sins, uh, God's wrath is, is upon them. See? It says they repented not to give him glory. But um, uh, God uses this word plagues as, as an older sin. See? And so um, if, you, if you go to Revelation 13, it's, it's similar language over there. Okay, look at verse 6. Um, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name or blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. See? And so uh, this, is, this is the beast and those that are in his kingdom his dominion, uh, the false church. And so um, remember, blaspheme means to speak evil of. So they're speaking evil of the gospel, the word of God. Um, they take his name in vain, say, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, them that dwell in heaven uh, against believers, say, they, uh, they, uh, they attack the believers. And uh, it says right there in verse seven, it was given unto him to make war with the saints. See? And so this is the this is what Satan and his false church, they come against uh, God's saints that are bringing forth, you know, the true gospel. And uh, and uh, they they blaspheme, they speak evil of those of the truth. See, and so uh, this is uh this is what they do. And so great heat is upon 
uh, these people, see, that uh, going back to Revelation 16, and men were scorched with great heat. So they're, they're under the wrath of God and blaspheme the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Now, in, in the Greek, repented means uh, to think differently, say, and God, God's the one uh, has that has to give us repentance. And he's the one that grants us repentance. I'll show you some verses. But remember in Revelation about Jezebel, chapter 2? Uh, she repented not either. See? Just like just like uh, we're reading here in, in Revelation 16. But look at uh, Revelation 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. And so, and that's the thing, they get caught up in these false gospels, and yet uh, they don't repent, say, uh, of their sins. And 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 God has to give us repentance. Uh, I want to read uh, Revelation 9, look at 20 and 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor of their thefts. See? And so... Again, it's uh, Jesus says, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. One more over is Second Corinthians twelve twenty one. Second Corinthians, look at twelve uh, twenty one over there. <clears throat> and unless when I come, I again I come again, my God will humble me among you. And that I shall be wail many which have sinned already and have not repented of, of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they've committed. And so we read repentance, repent, repent. And again, uh, it comes from God, see? Look at Acts chapter 5. You could, you could read it yourself. Look at verse 31. See this word uh, give. It's it's also translated grant. Uh, God has to grant us, give us repentance. See, why why do you think people don't uh, aren't uh, sorry for their sin? Because God, if God doesn't give them repentance, then they'll because uh, it means to think differently. See. So you'll think differently about committing that sin, you know, okay, when you repent. But it's a, it's of the Lord. Look at Acts 5.31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, uh, for to give repentance eh, to Israel and forgiveness of sin. See? And so... Um, what did what what did we read in John three? A man could receive nothing except what? It, yeah, if it, unless it's been given him from heaven, say so it has to give repentance. Okay, the other one is in Acts eleven. It's this, it's same word, but there it's 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 translated grant. It, it's the same word give. Look at you can see verse uh, uh, eighteen right there. It says, uh, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, 
then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. See? So God grants us. It's part of self. It's 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 the the work of God when we get saved. Give us repentance, grants us repentance. See? That's why it says a broken and a contrite heart, he what? He will not despise, see? And and uh, that's repentance, see? We don't we don't have that hardened heart. And uh, uh, that's why it says a broken heart, see? And uh, and again, this is all of the Lord, see? These these uh, uh this this action that God takes it's it's uh it's God's action. He's the one that brings us into the kingdom. He's the one that grants us uh, repentance. He's the one that's uh, predestinated us uh, before the foundation of the world to be saved. We're one of His sheep, okay? And uh, and and Jesus says, um, "What man having a hundred sheep say?" Christ is that man, and God's elect are, are all those hundred sheep. Okay, all right. Um, so go back to Revelation, and we we see that um, uh, if people can go on the rest of their life in their sins, see, and uh, and yet the miracle that God brings us into repentance and. Uh, uh, fellowship and a relationship with our Lord Jesus, say, eh? and that's why let's go to Psalms fifty-one, where it says all that. And uh, against thee, um, yeah. Okay, look at Psalms fifty-one, five and six. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Remember? And the spirits of just men made perfect. Inward parts. And in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. See? That's how we understand scripture. In the hidden part, in our spirit. See? Yeah. We understand spiritual things okay so uh verse 10 create in me a clean heart O god and renewed a right renew a right spirit within me see god gives us salvation see unless god creates uh, and grants us repentance uh that person will continue in their sin see and uh harden hard-hearted say and uh and so god has to give us uh as it says look at 17 the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise say well god gives us that contrite heart say and and uh anyway this is uh, this is the uh, nature of uh, the work of God when we get saved, say, and, and not walk in, in uh, stiff necked or hard hearted, say. We have a, a, a broken and a contrite heart uh, that we say against thee, uh, and like in verse 4, uh, 51 4, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and clear when thou judgest. Say, all right, sin against God. We sin against God. So, uh, uh, when we're washed of our sins, that's uh, salvation. And now uh, He wipes all our sins away. Say, cleanses us. Uh, we'll go to First John. It's a good verse over there. Remember John chapter First John. Uh, look at First John, chapter one. Look at eight and nine. 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, see? And then uh, I want to read verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin, see? So now we have peace with God, see? No longer under the heat or the wrath of God. So go back to 16. And now, um, and, and so God has to grant us um, repentance, see? He has to grant us repentance. And then uh, as we look at verse 10, it says, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. Now, this word seat, uh, it means to sit. And uh, we know that uh, uh, Satan um, Satan has his seat, and he has his kingdom. Uh, if you go to Revelation 2, but during great tribulation, he takes his seat, you know, in Babylon or in the place of worship. And uh, uh, look at Revelation chapter 2. Look at in verse 13 there. It says, um, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days where in Antipas that was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. See? Well, this is a picture, you see, of how he's dwelling in the place of worship. And uh, uh, that's why it says, even where Satan's seed is, it means to sit. Um, if you go over to Revelation 13, it's going to say, uh, verse 2 over there. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leper, and his feet were as the feet of a bear and the mouth is of mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat say the dragon is satan and gave him his power and his seat in great authority say so this is the this is where he sits during great tribulation in that place of worship let me just show you where it says that. Go to 2 Thessalonians. Look at uh, chapter 2. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth, in the temple of God, see, there's the word sitteth right there. He takes, where's the temple of God? Well, the Bible tells us over there in Matthew 21, uh, where the temple of God show and showeth himself that he is God. But go to Matthew 21, look at verse 12. This is the same words, Greek words, if you want. Um, look at Matthew 21, 12. Jesus went into the temple of God, say. So that would be the place of worship. And Thessalonians says that he sitteth in the temple, say. The devil, Satan, sits in the temple of God. And here, Jesus went into the temple of God, say, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple would be the place of worship. That's why I tell you, he takes a seat in the churches, the place of worship. That's where he's going to sit, say. And he's and uh, this is where, the, uh, because of that, the gospel is silenced because they're now they've overrun. It's, it says Babylon has, uh, as remember in Revelation, 
has fallen, has fallen, and become uh, 18.2. Uh, and, he, and he said, Babylon, the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and cage of unclean and hateful birds. Of course, figurative language, but uh, it says it's become the habitation of devils, see? And so that's how you're going to have, um, uh, during the, in, in great tribulation, you're not going to hear the truth because Satan's taking his seat, see? And it's similar to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, remember that they, they were all blinded uh, and they couldn't find the door. If you remember that, the door is Christ, but they were blinded. And yet Lot, God went in to get Lot. And, uh, and, uh, and so Lot and his two daughters came out. Everybody else perished. Those four cities. God rained fire and brimstone. I just read that. And so you could see how uh, they were all unsaved and uh, uh, they didn't they didn't repent. okay? And this is this is the uh, Jesus says in Matthew 24, just like the days of Lot, so shall it be when the Son of Man coming, see? So back there is a picture of great tribulation, Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, so in verse 10, the fifth angels, back in Revelation 16, 10, poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, okay? And his kingdom was full of darkness. All right, and so that word darkness, it means to blind, okay? And this is uh, the nature, or this is the condition of Satan's dominion. Dark. It's dark. You can't see. You're blinded, see? And uh, this is why when we get saved, the Lord opens up our spiritual eyes, see? Otherwise, someone that stay, it remains there, they can't see because they're in darkness. Look at look at John 3, 19. We're almost done. Uh, I just want to cover a few more verses. Uh, look at John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. <laughs> See? We're children, <clears throat> by nature, we're children of wrath. It says in, in Ephesians. Okay. So uh, his dark, his, his uh, kingdom was full of darkness. Um, go to Acts 26. Look at verse uh, 17 and 18. Delivering thee from the people. And from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee to open their eyes, that's salvation, and to turn them from darkness, they, they're blinded, uh, to light. And Jesus is a light. And of course, this is all the, the work of God when we become, uh, when our eyes are open, see. But God uses the saints as we witness the gospel. Uh, to bring them into salvation, but yet it's the Lord that gives us that new heart, that new spirit. So to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan, see? So that would be darkness, see? Unto God, that would be the light, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. And so... All those in the Lamb's Book of Life will be saved before the end of time. Okay. So, guaranteed, if you, if your name, uh, God has uh, predestinated you unto salvation, you'll be saved. Say, okay. And you'll follow the Lord Jesus. You'll follow the truth. Jesus says, the true worshipers uh, worship me in spirit and in truth. And then to finish up, it says they nod their tongues. See, they and back in 16, uh, they nod. That word nod, it means to chew. Why do they chew their tongues? See, 
What, what's that teaching? They nod their tongues for pain. Well, pain is sin. See? And you remember what James said about the tongue? Now go to uh, James chapter 3. Even so the tongue, five and six, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a look, a, a matter, uh, a, a matter, a little fire kindling. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth the fire the, uh, on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. See? So to chew, to gnaw their tongues is, is really uh, they're, uh, they're in their sins. See? Their tongue has defiled them. See? Their tongue has defiled them. It says it. The tongue is a little member and it says um, uh, the tongue, where does it say? The tongue it defileth in verse six, the whole body, see? And, and so that's why it says uh, they nod their tongues for pain. And, and pain is sin, see? Pain is sin. And so um, this, is the, this is the nature of uh, when someone is in Satan's dominion and darkness in the false church. They are under God's wrath. They're under God's heat, God's fire, and, and they're and they're in their sins. So all that language about um, uh, here, they nod their tongues uh, for pain, sin. You see, and uh, uh, they repented not um, uh, as sin. Say they repented none of their sins. So all these things, the plagues. Uh, these are the pictures and types their sin okay wounds or sores spiritually these people are not uh, saved they're in their sins and because of that god's wrath is upon them see and this is this is the language you have here and so i just want to finish by um uh just reading a few more verses and then we're done go to uh matthew 12 37 <clears throat> Matthew 12, 37. Hmm. Okay, 12, 37. By your words, thou shalt be justified. Say, and and uh, of course, when we're born of God, we, we confess Christ. Say, uh, rose from the dead and uh, he's our lord and savior and we're justified and by and then it says and by thy words thou shalt be condemned see so that tongue those that are condemned that tongue is uh, is defiles that whole body see remember the mouth uh, the heart speaks with uh, let's see how does that go uh, it's right here in 12 uh Look at verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye be in evil speak good things, which is the gospel, good things, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, see? So it says a good man, that would be God's elect, out of the good treasure of the heart, Christ is in our heart, the word we have hid in our heart, the good treasure, the gospel of the Lord Jesus, bringeth forth good things that's will bring forth the gospel of christ an evil man say out of the evil treasure that would be his false gospels bringeth forth evil things say that's why false prophets uh are are under the wrath of god that's why it says and thy words by your words you, you shall be condemned say so it's it's really important uh when we're saved, of course, God puts the truth in, in our hearts. And that's why we speak the true gospel. Now, just finishing up uh, a few verses and then we're done. Go to Proverbs 6. 
this is all about the tongue. See, we're talking about the tongue. So these are all verses and proverbs that touch on the tongue. Look at, let's start with six. Look at verse 17. A good, a proud look, a lion tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. These are some of the things the Lord hates. Look at verse 24. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. False gospels there, see? Look at chapter 10. Look at verse 31. The mouth of the just bringeth forth um, uh, wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. Okay? Look at uh, chapter 12, verse 19. All about the tongue. Mm -hmm. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Okay? Almost done. Look at 21.6. Proverbs 21.6. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. And the last one is chapter 26. Look at verse 28. The tongue, 26, 28. A lion tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it. And a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Okay. And so, again, uh, God tames our tongue when we're saved. Now we speak for the gospel. Okay, so I'm going to sum it up, and then we're done. Go to re back in Revelation 6, 16. All right, let's look at verse 9. It says, and men were scorched with great heat. That's the wrath of God, uh, the heat, the fire, and blaspheme the name of God uh, to speak evil, see, of God's word. Uh, they take the name of the Lord in vain. They, they speak evil of the gospel, the word of God. Uh, that's what blasphemy means, to speak evil of, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not. Uh, plagues would be the, this uh, sin, uh, God's wrath being poured out because of their sins, and God uh, has power to, to uh, take that uh, wrath away from us, say, as we read in, in Revelations there, 7. Uh, we're no longer under God's wrath when we become saved. But here, these uh, uh, God's poured out, poured out his wrath upon this, this false uh, Babylon, this false the gospel is here, false church. So they repented not to give him glory, see? And that's, they're in their sins, the hardness of their heart. They, they're uh, not saved, of course. God has to grant you repentance. Verse 10 the 15 who poured out his vial upon the seat uh, of the beast, Satan's dominion, and his kingdom is full of darkness. Eh? And uh, anybody uh, that is not saved is blinded. Uh, that's what that darkness, it, it means uh, uh, blinded, okay, to blind. And, and, and so uh, people are spiritually blind uh, that are in darkness that are in the the kingdom of the beast see and god has to bring us out of there when we're saved and he does all the work and they nod their tongues uh and that word means to chew because of their sins see that pain is a picture of sin see their sores uh and what have you uh, it even gets into that when we get into verse 11. And they blaspheme God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, see? And repented not of their deeds. So we're right on track what pain means. It's sin, and this is the condition of unsaved man. They're, they're, uh, they're in bondage to sin, and they're under God's wrath. So remember, it's a big weight uh, that is upon us. Our sins are heavy. But when we get saved, uh, Jesus lifts those up, lifts those sins away from us, see, 
and now we're uh, washed of our sins, saying he gives us a new heart and new spirit. So, okay, Lord willing, next week, we're going to look at uh, chapter 16 and verse 11.